welcome. Thank you for joining us today for our STEM at Home session, Shape Magic. Bran Wynn is with us today. She is a doctoral student um, in mathematics, and I will let her introduce herself and then start us on our activity. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Bran Wynn. Yes, I am a fifth year student uh, in the PhD program in the Department of Mathematics at Oregon State. My research is in undergraduate mathematics education. I'm about to graduate next week, actually, which is super exciting. Yeah. Um, so today I'm here to share a couple of fun activities, which we have called Shape Magic. Um, the first one is called Hexa Flexagon. So you should have this PDF document that you can print out. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with this one and then I'll, I'll introduce the second one afterwards. So to get started with Hexa Flexagon, you'll see you have two things you can cut out here. We're just gonna cut out this um, skinnier one. This one over on the other side is the exact same thing. So you could try this on your own after the video. It's just um, doubly thick. So when you when you cut this one out, you could fold it in half and you'd have a slightly sturdier hexaflexagon, which can do more flips and everything. So let's go ahead and get started by cutting out this piece. And you'll notice there's an extra little triangle here. So depending on if you have glue or scissors at home, you will need this triangle if you're using glue. You do not need this triangle if you're using tape. Okay, I'm going to cut mine out, including the glue triangle, just to give you a visual of what that looks like. And it'll, it'll become pretty clear um, how to do it without, without glue if you just have tape. Branwyn, what was your undergraduate degree in? My undergraduate degree was also in mathematics um, from the University of Portland in Portland, Oregon. So it's a tiny Catholic college up there. Um, and yeah, I, I actually went to school to be a kindergarten teacher and realized that I missed mathematics. So I took a calculus class for fun, <laughs> for fun. That should have been my first clue. <laughs> And uh, I, I quickly fell in love with math and was taking more and more classes and, and decided to go ahead and major in it. And then I ended up in grad school. Wonderful. Yeah. I love that story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so hopefully you have your strip cut out. If not, you can pause the video here. Okay, it looks like Emily has her, her um, glue triangle as well. Okay. So to get started now, I'm going to, I want you to hold your strip so that um, the, the triangle that's not with the glue side, so with the pointy part on top, is, is on your left hand side. And I'm going to have you number it one, two, three, four, five, and, and so on. So let me get a, a pen here and I'll show you. You don't, I think this is helpful for this first one that you make, but in the future, once you get the, the pattern of making a hexaflexagon down really well, um, you'll, you'll be okay without the numbering system, but I think for this first one, it's kind of helpful. So again, I've numbered them starting with one at that top triangle and then all the way to nine. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is fold our hexaflexagon, and I'm going to fold it accordion style. Accordion, you know, like that instrument goes. Rrr, rrr, rrr. I actually care a lot about accordions because I'm an Irish dancer, um, and it's one of the like main instruments we use uh, for music. Um, but so these these folds are going to kind of go over and then back and then over and then back. So you should end up with something that looks like an accordion. We're going to start by folding down so that the one and the two touch each other and you can use this little dashed line sort of as a guide. So I'm just covering the one and the two. And then to make it look like an accordion, you're gonna fold backwards so that you can still see the three. And then again, fold forward so the three and the four cover each other. And then fold backwards on the five. <laughs> Fold forward on the six, backwards on the seven. How important is it that these 
folds are exactly on the little dotted lines? Um, I would say the, the closer your folds are, the more smoothly your hexaflexagon will flip. I mean, if you see mine super close, I'm, it's not perfect, but you want it to be fairly close. And I would say after you do this first set of folds, we're gonna, we're gonna take a moment and just sort of make sure that our creases are nice and strong and, and that you've got everything the way you want. So I kind of maybe do like one where you press a little less hard the first time, and then just sort of inspect that it's exactly maybe where you want it and maybe get your fingernails in there to press it and get a little nice strong crease. Another thing I do to get creases, if you take a pencil and put it on the table and run the pencil along the edge, that has helped me in the past too. Yes, that is especially good if you don't have fingernails too, <laughs> or you don't want to risk a little paper cut. I hold my little blue one here. And the, the closer or the, the nicer you cut the hexaflexagon out to begin with, the smoother those lines are, that'll also make a small difference here. But you can see, you know, mine's not exactly perfect. Nothing in life really is. Yeah, there's little folds everywhere. Okay, so go ahead and open that up. So we should have something that kind of is already starting to naturally bend and twist a little bit. Okay, this can be the trickiest part of the entire thing. And it's even trickier for me because I'm doing it facing you all. So let's see if I can do this. I might have to face it towards myself first. Okay, so we've got it like this. Hopefully if you started yours the same way as me where you folded the one to cover the two, your, you can't even see my eyes. Your, uh, what I do next should be natural for your hexaflexagon. If you maybe started by folding the one backwards instead of forwards, your hexaflexagon will also work, but it might, you might have to turn it around or something to, 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 make, the, to make it look like mine. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, right at the bend between four and five, we're going to just push it back and it should naturally start to stick up like this. So all you can see is five through nine and the rest of the hexaflexagon is you can see the other side of the paper. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is starting at eight, it should naturally want to bend forwards. So now all you should be able to see is five and six. Okay, now the special thing about a hexaflexagon or the way that's, that's the, the way that it's going to um, flip nicely is if we have this special sort of pattern where you can see two triangles and then a little pocket. So you notice if you look at five and six, there's two triangles on the same piece of paper and then there's a little bit of a pocket here. And then these next two triangles, which you can't see them, what is that? That's triangle eight and triangle nine but they're flipped backwards from you. There's two of them. And then you wanna have a little pocket. So you're going to take this little tail and tuck it behind so that you get five and six in a little pocket. And then you get eight and nine backwards with a little pocket. And then you should see two and three, which are also reversed and then a little pocket. That's how you know you've done your hexaflexagon correctly is if you always have two triangles and a little pocket. And if you turn it around, you should see something super similar. So now I have triangles one and three, and then I'll have a little pocket here. And then I'll have, um, this is my glue triangle, I suppose. <sighs> Sorry, it was bent a little funny. Um, a triangle and nine and then a little pocket and then these two and a little pocket. So that's how you know you've done it correctly. You should always have two in a pocket. Okay, now I realize I'm using my glue triangle and somehow I ended up with with one being the thing covering it. So perhaps, perhaps I also could have started. Sorry, Emily. <laughs> You're good. I'm just wondering if someone didn't have this glue triangle. I think it's still fine. Maybe I'll maybe I'll I'll demonstrate it this way, then I'll cut my glue triangle off and show you the other way as well. Okay, so I just flipped my four backwards, flipped eight and nine forward, and did my little tail tuck. Okay, so now at this point. You could either, if you didn't have glue, just tape over that crease right there. Or if you do have glue, you would take the little triangle that's folded up and then just 
tuck it down and, and glue these two together. Okay, so um, I ended up holding it in, in my one ended up being my, my glue triangle flap. So sorry, this is another, there's a lot of ways you can actually make textbooks gone. You can also fold from three down. So now it looks like this, whereas before I had it from four up. So you can fold from three down, and then you can fold from seven down in the forwards direction, and then do your little tail flip. And that's probably more correct because now my extra glue piece is, is the thing. So especially if you didn't have the glue, you would want to fold from three down and fold from seven down in front. And then without the glue piece, you would just tape over between triangles one and nine. Okay, sorry, it just folded the wrong way at first, but it, it all works out the same. Okay, let me tape up my hexaflexagon. I'll even cut off my glue flap here. Okay, folding from three down, folding from seven down, and then we've got a little tail tuck. Perfect. And before you glue, it's just good to make sure that all your edges are sort of lining up exactly how you want. How's yours looking, Emily? Great. Oh, lovely, I love it. Okay, so I just have a little piece of tape here and I'm just connecting nine and one together. Okay. Now for the artistic part. So pick a side of your hexaflexagon and you're going to color it. Any color you want. I'm choosing blue for mine. Um, I recommend crayons or colored pencils because if your color bleeds through to the other side of the paper, you won't get the best hexaflexagon effect. And we're coloring all six pieces that we see. All six pieces on one side. That's a great clarifying question. Lovely, okay. Now here's another tricky part. We are going to, well, let's see, before we do anything, mm, what do you think, Emily? Would you like to color the other side first or would you like to flip, try and flip your hexaflexicon first? It, it'll work either way. I wanna color the other side. Color side, okay, let's go for it. <laughs> I'm gonna do red on my other side. I can hear my dog walking on the other side of this room. He's very sad that he wasn't invited to, to science night <laughs> or our <laughs> webinar. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so yes, I've got a blue side and a red side. Emily, those red and green. Nice, I love it. Okay, now we can flip our hexaflexagon. This part can also be a little bit tricky, so feel free to pause the video and rewind to see it again. I'm going to start on this side. So for me, I have a nine, eight, two, and a three, but it, you can do it on either side. You're going to, okay, there's a few ways to describe how this works. You want to pinch your hexaflexagon and you wanna try and find a natural way to make three little points like this. So for me, it happened, I have eight and nine as a pinch, two and three are pinched together, and then I have a couple of blank ones that are pinched together. And it might, it might take you a few seconds 
Um, the better you crease your hexaflexagon in the, in the beginning, the easier this will be, but it should sort of naturally happen. And if that doesn't work, we can try the other right. one. We should, we should pinch both ways um, just to get it nice and loose. And then we're gonna find the one that makes our hexaflexagon actually flex. So it looks like on mine, and I'm assuming it's the same as yours, that mm -hmm. we, you had those three double pieces, right? So this was a double piece and then a pocket. Yes. That those are folded in half together. Ah, uh, I think you are right, Emily. You are definitely right. I love that description. So yeah, so for me, and I just figured it out too. So eight and nine are part of the same strip and then there's a pocket. So I'm going to be folding those towards each other. And then two and three are on the same side and then there's a pocket and I wanna fold those together or fold those into the middle as well. So you're folding those creases in. So anything on the same side should be folded, the middle of that side should be folded in and you should end up with something kind of like this. And the reason this is going to work now is because anything with a pocket is facing outwards. And because of all those pockets, you should find that you can stick your finger through the middle and suddenly you have a new side. You had a blue side and a red side and the red side is completely gone now. We have a third blank side to color. That is part of the magic. So you can go ahead and color this third side with a new crayon. Did that work for you, Emily? It did. I, I had some issues, <laughs> <laughs> but it finally did. It took a lot of little movements. Yeah, you kind of have to like bend it. A, it's almost like um, like a cootie catcher, mm -hmm. right? That sometimes we used to make in grade school. I'm not sure if kids still make those, um, but you sort of have to bend it a few times before it starts operating smoothly. But now we should have a third side showing. Yay, okay, so now my green side and my blue side are showing. And we can do the exact same thing as before. And let's see what happens and try and make a guess for yourself what you think is gonna happen if I take any side that's on the same, or sorry, the same piece, and then I push it so that they're going to touch each other. And I do that all around so that my pockets are facing up and out. So for me, that means that seven and six are kind of folding in towards each other. And you should be able to stick your finger again through the middle and it just sort of falls open. And now your red and your green side are showing. Woohoo! And there you have it, a hexaflexagon. And this is a great thing to sort of fiddle with. Um, if you're if you're listening to a, another video or maybe to show your school friends, you can be like, look, I have this object with two sides and a third hidden side. How many things in life can you say have three sides to them? So that's pretty cool. We have this hexaflexagon and you can just continually flip it and flip it and flip it. That is pretty cool. This is really fun. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So it's, it's, it's kind of addicting to just sit there and, 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 and flip it and flip it and flip it. Um, maybe we can put a link uh, in the webinar. There's a, a cool series of videos on YouTube of, about hexaflexagons by a really awesome mathematician. Her name is By Heart. And she has other ones you can print out where it's twice as long. 
And when you fold it up, you end up getting a hexaflexagon with like six sides to it, I think. So you can flip it and there's six different color combinations that come through. That's kind of neat. So this is just the beginning. <laughs> and you can, you can imagine how too, like flipping this so many times it might start tearing or getting a little thin, which is why we have, oh, now where did it go? The, the double thick version. So if you cut this out and then fold down the middle, that you would have a sturdier um, layer for, for doing your hexaflexagon folds. Great, okay, well, that is our first shape magic is hexaflexagons. Are we ready for our second one? I'm ready. Okay, so our second shape magic for today is called a Mobius strip. And so we are gonna start, we just have a, a very plain looking piece of paper with lines on it. You're going to want the four thicker lines, there's kind of this extra one where we just had room. So this little thin piece, you can just cut off and, and discard, but um, you should end up with four strips of paper. Is it very important that it's very straight lines? Um, No, I, I mean, straight-ish is good, but we're not folding these in the same way that we folded the hexaflexagons. So a little bit of a curve isn't going to impact your design too much. What are you hoping to do with your doctoral degree? Yeah, so I really love teaching. It's one of my favorite things in the entire world. And I really love working with college students as well. Um, in particular, like first generation college students or like just, just non-typical college students from like your, your 18 year old um, freshman sort of ideal. So I will be teaching at the community college in my hometown of Washington State. Um, which is super exciting to be doing that full time. And uh, I will be starting some new research projects as well, because as much as I love teaching, I also really enjoy um, research and, and watching students think about mathematics and learn mathematics. And I study classroom dynamics in particular and active learning and how classrooms where students are actually doing the math helps them um, both socially and in learning the mathematics and in their future uh, endeavors with math. So I'm hoping to start some new research projects as well at that the community fun. college. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm super excited. And I, I really enjoy my hometown. It's on the Eastern side of the state. And it's really, I'm really thankful that they had an opening and, and wanted to take me on. So Definitely. yeah. Well, we're excited for you, that's for sure. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully you have your four strips cut out. Okay, we only need one strip for this first one. It's gonna be pretty straightforward. You're just going to make a ring. And when I say a ring, I just mean you're gonna take the ends together and you can either glue them or tape them. The important thing is that you want to make sure that your glue or tape goes the whole width of the strip. So whether you glue or you tape, make sure it goes all the way. And I kind of just like to hold it with two fingers and then find my tape. And it doesn't matter which side is on top? Um, nope, it does not matter. Great question. Okay, there's mine. Okay, so this is just kind of a simple, simple ring, we might call it, or like a piece of a cylinder is another mathematical descriptor for this type of object. And what we're gonna do is we're going to pretend that we are a little ant. So you might use a, a crayon or a pen or a pencil. Um, try not to use a marker again that bleeds through because that'll make the next part more difficult. But we're gonna pretend we're just a little ant. What should our ant's name be, Emily? Maurice. Maurice. I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna draw Maurice and I'm gonna draw him just sort of on the center of my strip like so. Oh, he needs a smile. Come on, Maurice. There we go. Now Maurice is smiling. And it's so funny, like there are a few of these, I love it. <laughs> there are a few of these sort of like 
just like classic canonical things in mathematics. And for some reason, ants and Mobius strips just always go hand in hand. Don't don't ask me why. <laughs> so we're so he was more recent. He's living on this little world. So we're gonna just imagine that this ring, this this cylinder is Maurice's entire planet. This is all he lives on. And all Maurice can do is walk in a straight line. It's not the best existence, but but it's his existence. So we're just going to imagine a day in the life of Maurice, and we're just going to start drawing from his little smiley face, just start drawing a straight line as long as you can until you reach Maurice again. And so kind of it can be helpful to lay it flat on the table and draw your line and then just sort of pull your strip and draw your line some more. It's, it's okay to smush the strip on the table is what I'm saying. So draw some line, draw some line. How's Maurice looking? There he is. Quick trip. <laughs> yep, okay, here, I'm almost done. There we go. Okay, I just drew Maurice's life on the ring. Oh, he's upside down, isn't he? Where, yes, he is. Poor Maurice. <laughs> there he is. Maurice's life on the strip going around. And so one thing that we might notice is that Maurice never sees the inside of his planet. Right? He's only ever walking around the outside of this ring. So this is what we call an orientable surface. Like orient is it as if you could orient your direction. It has an inside and it has an outside. And the main indicator of that is this fact that when Maurice walks in a straight line, he only ever visits one side of his world. So that's an orientable surface. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you first and then you're gonna pause the video and I want you to make a guess for yourself. Not, not you, Emily, I just mean our, our, our lovely viewers. So I'm gonna fold my strip a little bit. This is, this is the way I found is the, most, is the easiest to do it. And I'm just gonna make a little tiny incision just there on the fold. And then I'm gonna open it up and then stick my scissors right where that little hole is. Oh, be careful. <laughs> okay. And then I'm just gonna start cutting along Maurice's path. And unfortunately, you're gonna have to cut Maurice in half too if you've, if you've done this like I have. And so right now I want you to go ahead and pause the video. And I want you to guess what's going to happen to Maurice's planet when you finish cutting all the way around his path. What's going to happen to Maurice's planet? Okay, we're gonna go for it. Oh, I'm so sorry, Maurice. Here he goes. Okay, here's the final moment. Ah! Maurice's planet is split into two planets. And there are two planets that are identical to the original one, right? These look like two rings. Okay, so that is another indicator that Maurice was living on this oriental surface. We cut it in half and it split into two of the same things. Let's try to put Maurice on a different planet and see what happens. This one's a little bit trickier, so I'm going to give some instructions and, and hopefully this works out. So, new strip of paper. On one end of my paper, I'm going to draw a smiley face on the left end of my paper, just like so. Then I'm going to turn my paper upside down so that my smiley face is now on the right side and upside down. And I'm going to draw another right side up smiley face on the left side. And I'll just draw it really quick so you can see your end result should be that you have a smiley face on either side, but one is upside down and one is right side up. Which one is upside down and which one is right side up kind of depends on the way you look at it. Okay, tricky part. This one, this one takes a little bit of practice, but maybe Emily, she, you came up with a great idea for the hexaflexagon, so I'm sure you'll come up with something here too. Essentially, I want you to manipulate your paper around so you can get the, the marker, the marker sides of the eyeballs to touch and the smiles to touch. And so kind of what you have to do is bring them together like you're gonna do a ring, but then kind of turn one, twist one towards you so that you can get the eyeballs to touch and the, and the mouths to touch. 
So they're face to face. Yes, exactly. Face to face and they should look like they're lined up exactly. And you get something kind of funky like this. Nice. Okay, so go ahead and yeah, if, if you're doing blue, you have to be really um uh skilled. <laughs> but with tape at least, I just kind of hold it between my fingers, get a piece of tape. Again, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, I guess in this one we want the eyeballs and mouths to touch, so it, it kind of does matter that part. But um, it you just need to make sure that your tape or glue covers the entire crease since we're also gonna be cutting this one in half. And if you don't have the glue or the tape covering the whole strip, it's gonna fall apart when we cut it. Okay, so now this is what we call a Mobius strip or Mobius band is another name for it. And you can see already it's looking a little bit different than our ring, huh? Very different looking. Okay, so let's put Maurice on this new planet. I'm just gonna kind of draw, find like the flat part. Again, it's, it's okay to kind of squish this on the table so that you can draw on it. We're gonna draw Maurice in the middle of our Mobius strip. I think I gave Maurice way too many legs, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think I gave him an extra two legs under his chin. <laughs> <laughs> not really their fangs? I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, poor Maurice. <laughs> okay, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to see what happens to Maurice if he travels a straight path on his surface. And now it's a little bit tricky, but basically just, just draw as far as you can and then kind of just rotate your strip a little and lay it flat on the table and keep drawing. It can get a little awkward feeling, but just keep, it's almost like a, like a, a tape. I don't even know if people these days use, like know what tapes look like. I'm just thinking like, like a cassette tape, like I'm just sort of like rolling it. <laughs> oh dear. You're dating yourself, Brandon. I know. Probably also I'm dating myself. I have skinny jeans and a side part. <laughs> 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 oh dear okay keep going just keep drawing that line all the way until you get back to Maurice's starting point feels like a much longer trip this time <laughs> it kind of seems like it huh we'll have to see what happens when we step back and look at the whole thing oh Maurice where are you I promise you'll find him eventually just just trust the process Yay, did you find Maurice again? I did. I'm just sort of turning this. Ah. I just wanted Maurice on the outside. Where are you, Maurice? There he is. <laughs> There's Maurice. Maurice, my goodness, we missed you. <laughs> okay, so what do we notice about this one? You might pause the video and, and kind of just um, get curious about this Mobius strip and how it's similar or different to the ring that we were looking at before. This one, I don't know about you, Emily, but I can't find a single piece of this paper that Maurice didn't travel. It pretty much looks like he covered the whole thing, which is interesting because this is a this is a three dimensional object, right? It's like we live in 3D space as, as humans and this object is sitting in 3D space, but it only has one side to it, which is kind of weird. This is a non-orientable surface. It doesn't have an inside and an outside. It only has one side. So this is sort of a, a classic, um, mathematicians really like, um, it's not quite a paradox, but almost like a, a counter example to how we think reality should be versus how reality actually is. We love these little sorts of things that are, are kind of simple to explain, but really mind boggling in, 
in, in how they, they look or interact with the rest of the world. And we use these sorts of things a lot when we're trying to make proofs um, or explain new mathematical concepts or come up with new concepts, is we use these sorts of counterexamples and then we build off of them and build off of them and end up establishing like whole new areas of math. So it's like a, one very simple piece of paper, but it's actually representing something really big and really cool. We call this um, field of mathematics that deals with things like Mobius rings. We call it topology, not topography, which is the study of maths, but topology, which are these sorts of, of weird surfaces. It's, it's very closely related to geometry, but, but not quite because we don't use rulers or things to, to measure like angles or lengths. We just study more like the structure um, of shapes and spaces. So this is Maurice's new world. I think he enjoys it here a little bit more. He can travel twice as far, has, has twice the real estate to look at, which is kind of fun. And now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing that we did last time, where I take a little piece and I, I just snip it with my scissors. And then I'm going to stick my hole, I stick my scissors in that hole and start cutting along Maurice's path. And again, I invite you to, to pause the video and uh, try and make a guess about what's going to happen to Maurice's world. And if you remember um, with our ring world, the ring, yeah, split into two identical things, huh? So let's see what happens when we split Maurice's world up. And you have to be very careful of all the, the twists and stuff and just sort of find the best angle to keep cutting. Okay, final moment here. What? This is crazy. We split Maurice's world in half, but we didn't cut it into two things. So this is another really cool indicator of, of this non-orientable surface is it's just not, we cut something in half, but it didn't fall into two pieces. That's very like antithetical to, to how we think of, of, of shapes and the way the world works. Um, so that's super fun. And you might get curious again about like, well, this new shape, is this orientable or non-orientable? Does it have one side or two sides? And so maybe, maybe pause the video and think to yourself, like, how would I figure out whether a surface has one side or two sides to it? Hopefully, hopefully you pause the video because I'll just go ahead and tell you, put Maurice on this new planet. Take your BFF Maurice, draw him, and then and then start drawing a line around and, and just let's see it could really go either way i'm gonna try and not give maurice fangs this time <laughs> just just some little legs that's maurice has kind of turned into a centipede but that's okay there he is he's a caterpillar <laughs> right now he doesn't <laughs> he's just going through all sorts of changes okay i'm just going to start drawing maurice's path on this new world What'd you find? <laughs> that he met up with himself and that there is a blank side. There is. So we are back on an orientable surface, which is kind of funny because this surface has like turns and twists. And as much as you try, you can't get it to lay flat like a ring, but it is an orientable surface. It does have two sides. So that's another, another cool artifact of this Mobius strip. They're just, they're weird. They're weird in the coolest ways. Uh, so if this is lighting a fire and a passion in you, mathematics and topology might might be a good <laughs> way for your future. Um, this is just what, it, it just gets weirder from here, let me tell you. Uh, so this is the Mobius strip and, so, well, this, this that I'm holding isn't, but the activity is all about the Mobius strip and, and thinking about orientable and non-orientable surfaces and how we might investigate them. And we met our good friend, Maurice. So if we cut this in half again, 
what would happen? I don't know. We should try it. My, my inkling is that because it's an orientable surface, cutting it in half in my brain, this is my hypothetical, because it's an orientable surface, cutting it in half should result in two strips. Um, it might result in two interlocking strips because of the twists, but it's actually been a while since I've tried this. I'm pretty sure though, that I'm, I'm really glad you asked Emily. I think this happens a lot when we do this activity at um, outreach booths. Uh, we get we we get one student who just wants to keep going <laughs> and do it again and again and again, which is which is always fun. You just maybe need a slightly thicker strip. Let's see. Oh, okay, I just finished. Oh, the moment of truth. What happened for you? Yeah, yeah, we get yeah. these sort of interlocking strips. Um, We'd have to draw on it to see. Maybe I can just try and kind of guesstimate. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is orientable again. I just sort of drew my finger along along the the path. Yeah, so I think we have two two interlocking orientable strips now. So we can go from non-orientable to orientable. Is it? possible to go from mm. ori orientable to non-orientable? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I, I honestly don't know off the top of my head. I'm sure that there's a, a math proof sitting out there that, that describes this. My, my gut reaction is, is no, but I don't have the, the proof um, or reasoning right now to say so. And I will say one thing about topology that is always um, really inspired me is that the problems in topology are really easy to state and describe and really difficult to solve. Like <laughs> the, the, um, the, it's almost like topology has developed its entire own language and, and way of functioning. So it's, it's almost like you can, you can describe a story and what's going to happen in a story in Spanish or another language, but to actually then go read the story or write the story yourself, you need to learn a ton about Spanish um, and all the verb tenses and, and how to like make grammatically correct sentences and the vocabulary. And, and the same is sort of true of, of topology. Really easy to talk about the problems, really difficult to solve. And uh, maybe another link we could put below this webinar, there's a really, um, famous mathematician, uh, Miriam Mirzhani, who um, was an Iranian woman who unfortunately passed a few years ago, um, but she is the first woman to win the Fields Medal, which is sort of the mathematics equivalent of the Nobel Prize. And her area was in um, topology, geometry, and surfaces. And there's a really cool hour-long documentary about her life and her work. And one of my favorite things about that documentary is how easy it is to state the ideas of the problem she worked on. Like anyone could get it. And they might not even think of it as math. You know, like, oh yeah, sure, that, that makes sense. But then the actual mathematics required to do the work is just like hmm. amazing. and takes a whole lifetime to learn and, and study. Are so, you gonna win a field medal? Oh, no. <laughs> I think maybe. Have, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I would have to put a lot of time into it that uh, I might rather spend doing other things. <laughs> but, Very valid. Uh, yeah. Um, but I have complete admiration for people who spend their lives working on these problems. So this was our Mobius strip example. Um, there's one last sort of fun piece to this one. If, if we have a few more minutes, we want to go ahead and try the last piece. Yeah. It's sort of um, a cool party trick. Okay, so you are going to make two more Mobius strips. So if you need to go back in the video and um, rewatch how to make it, I'm just going to do it pretty quickly where you do a smiley face and then the other smiley face. Go ahead and make your smiley faces, but don't twist and make them into strips yet. Just, just get both of them ready. Smile. Smile.
Okay, we've got our two strips. Now this part, <laughs> I have said this for every part, this part's a little complicated. I've said that like every single time. <laughs> it's just like me, me as a, a dance teacher, me when I'm teaching, like, let's just do one more, like do it once more, do one more problem. <laughs> so this one's just a little complicated. Um, when you make a Mobius strip and you make your smiley faces touch, you actually make a choice as to whether you twist your strip clockwise or counterclockwise. So the first way to do it is if you, I'm gonna kind of position myself. If you bend, so if you have like the strips with the smiley faces not looking at you and you bend the strips toward you, and then I think you can take the upside down one on the right hand side. And let's say I'm gonna bend him counterclockwise. So I'm bending him away from me and make that strip. I can't forget that was my counterclockwise bent him away from me. This is one that you kind of have to do a few times. But once we make both our strips, you'll be able to tell pretty quickly whether you did it correctly. Okay, that was my counterclockwise. I bent him away from me. And now this one, I want to... Um, five my strips. Okay, so again, I turn it so that my smiley, I turn it so that my smiley strips are facing towards me. And this time I want to take the one on the right and bend it towards me like clockwise and get my smiley faces to touch. It's a little, it's it's a little hard to explain over Zoom. So I hope you're doing okay over there, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have two Mobius strips. I don't know. Okay, so let me finish mine and then you should be able to tell if you did it correctly because they should look like mirror images of each other. So you should kind of be able to hold them up and they like, it looks like you could stick them through a mirror. If you end up with two that like look the exact same, then, then you need to undo one of them and try again. But yeah, so you can see how mine are kind of curving away from each other. So how, can mm -hmm. I tell you how I did it as yes, well? Yes, please. Really quick. Okay. So I had two strips I don't mm -hmm. quick. and I had two smiley faces. But instead of turning one away from me and one towards me, mm -hmm. I turned the left one one time and I turned the right one the other time. Ah, and that'll also work. Yes. yes. Good. There's all, that's also like all mathematics going on in the background <laughs> is all these ways we can turn and make a Mobius strip. And actually those are the only two ways. We can either, right. yeah, like turn a left or turn a right. So there's two types of Mobius strips. <laughs> um, okay, so now that we have these two, we're gonna, it's gonna be a little bit tricky here. So I would, so you have these kind of two flat pieces, right? So not, not the parts where you taped it, but the two sort of flat pieces. You're going to put them on top of each other facing opposite directions so that you kind of have one with a hole going left to right and one with a hole going front to back. Yes, that's awesome. And then, um, so if you're using glue, you can just sort of glue between these two really well. If you're using tape, I would just sort of like tape down all the seams. So tape the seams of this top one and then tape the seams of the bottom one and just, just get yourself a, a nice secure edge so that these two are um, connected really well. And you want all of those edges connected because we're gonna cut this one in half also. Looking good. Yeah, this one's a little bit awkward, but with tape. Hopefully you can just kind of get it. I might just trim this little piece of tape out. <laughs> Let's make it easier. Okay, two sides. I'm gonna tape the other two sides really quickly. Just get it nice and secure. The better you do for this taping job, the easier the next part will be when we start cutting. Okay, so now we have this kind of cool double-sided Mobius strip. 
Excellent. And oh, at this point, sorry, I should say that sometimes I was I was so excited to do this part that I didn't do the other one, which is doing this with two rings first. So let me just cut out two rings really quick. Uh, I didn't ask you to print out another piece of paper, so it's okay if you can't do this part. I was so excited, Emily, about the Mobius strips that I forgot to do the ring version. So let me just take my two rings together and then I'll do the same thing where I have them. Just interlocking. Because um, I was so excited that I printed out two. <laughs> yay! <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Um, interlocking. So, yeah, you could. Through like that or just two? Um, let me see if it matters. I don't think it matters as long as it doesn't, no, it doesn't matter as long as you still tape, tape it down really well. Um, I think I'll do mine not interlocking, but I, I think no, either way it's going to be the same. Oh, oh, I've got this piece of tape all around my finger, okay. Well, we got the hard part done first, which is doing the Mobius strip version. This one will be much easier. Okay, yeah, so I have my two rings and I'm just gonna do the same thing where I do one going forward, front and back and one going left to right. Just take those there. It's much harder than it should have been. <laughs> I did interlocking ones and then I couldn't make it work. And yeah. Oh, no. so. yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'm almost done here. I can't believe I almost forgot this one. This one is actually just as fun for many other reasons which I'll explain shortly. <laughs> okay, so now we have something that looks like this. Okay, awesome. So one thing before I cut this, which is kind of cool, is these two circles um, are, a, a topologist would, would call them maybe the, the generating circles for a torus. And that's a really fancy phrase. When I say torus, I'll, I'll explain that word first. Um, I mean an object that you have a ton of experience with. A torus is the same shape as um, a classic donut you know, like with the hole in the middle or like a, an inner tube that you use to go floating on at the pool. So it's sort of that, that round shape with the hole in the middle. And we call these the generating circles because if you think about that classic delicious donut, it has one circle, which is sort of the, the radius going around. And then it has another circle, which is the, the circle going this way. Right, so it's a circular object both because if you look at it from the top down, it looks like a circle. And also if you sliced it in half, the, the actual inner tube part itself would look like a circle. So you can imagine if this circle was going all the way around, that would be the one where you get where you slice it in half. And this circle, if this circle kept going all the way around, it would make that top down appearance of a circle. So this is the, the generating circles for a torus. So we're not we're not actually making the whole torus right now, um, but that's and let me show you another. Way to make it. You could think of it this way too, where you get that first circle by rolling up a cylinder like this. So that would be getting um, this top circle because it kind of it's a circle this way, which is how this one is. And then the second circle, this bottom one, you get by rotating around. And if this was made of something not paper, it would be a lot easier, but you can imagine rolling it around. And so now these two circles come up to meet each other and you have your, your torus. Oh, I wish I had like Play-Doh or something because that would be a lot easier. Yes, okay. So what's going to happen when we cut both of these circles in half? So imagine Maurice lived on one of these rings, and then if he lived on the other of these rings, what's going to happen when we cut them in half? Okay, so I'm going to start, you just make a little slit, stick your scissors through, and then when you're cutting, 
because you've taped so well, you should be able to cut straight through the middle of that other circle ring. So halfway through, I kind of end up with something like this. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And now um, you can actually cut through the middle of the second ring as well. We kind of skipped a step where we didn't draw Maurice and draw his, his lines of travel. So um, for a, a younger student or something, that might be a, a helpful middle step so that they have lines to follow. What happened? <laughs> <In a square. laughs> which is so cool. Um, topologists love this sort of thing. So which this is this is really cool because essentially how a how a topologist would describe a torus, would describe that that donut shape, is they would say, okay, give me a square. And then I want you to say that the left and right hand side of your squares here, I'll just give you a little color to it to sort of imagine how a topologist would be. Maybe I'll color the left and right sides red. Okay, now just pretend that those are the same side. So a topologist would, would, would say, okay, just pretend that those two connect to each other. And then they would do sort of the same thing with the top and the bottom of the square. So I'll color those blue. And so they would say, okay, give me the, the top and the bottom of your square. Yep, so you've got the left and the right, which are the red, and they would say, okay, associate those two together. And then they have the top and the bottom, which are blue, and they'd say, okay, well, just associate those two together. And now suddenly you have a torus, which is that donut shape. And the reason that's so helpful is because, and this is, you know, getting kind of similar to the same ideas of the sorts of things that I was talking about with uh, Miriam's work. Um, Topologists really enjoy this sort of thing where you can visualize complex shapes in 2D formats. So anything I need to know about a torus, I can look at a square and, and get the same sorts of ideas. And like if I draw a line on a, on a square, or like a diagonal line, then I could also know what a line would look like on a torus because all I have to do is associate the left and the right and associate the top and the bottom. And now suddenly I have I have a torus shape. So mathematicians really enjoy this sort of thing where you can transfer um, the ideas of a, of a space that are kind of difficult to think about. You can transfer those into a space that you're super comfortable with. We love taking shortcuts in math. Anything to make our lives easier. That's another clue. If you love taking shortcuts, <laughs> mathematics might be for you, which is maybe a not what people usually think, but it's true. We love to make life as easy as possible. So that's kind of our, our cool intermediate step um, bef before we do our Mobius strip version is thinking about the torus. Okay, final party trick. We have our double Mobius strip here. This does not make a torus. <laughs> uh, in fact, it won't really make uh, anything because of its known orientability. Um, but it's cool looking. We're going to play the exact same game where we cut both of these Mobius strips in half and we see what we end up with. Um, again, this is kind of kind of tricky. So just make a make a little cut with your scissors and then follow it through as best you can. You might kind of have to like turn your paper as you go. And then find your second one. This is the moment of truth. <laughs> if you've done this correctly, maybe I'll wait. A minute. Are you done? I am. Yeah. You should get something that looks like two hearts. Look oh my. <laughs> it's a little hard to show on camera. It it's better if it's laying flat, but I promise yeah. you have these sort of two interlocking hearts. So cute. So come next Valentine's Day if you want to send a really nerdy Valentine to your friend 
or a family member, whoever, you can send them just two strips of paper and some instructions. <laughs> And, and they can make their own lovely Valentine for you. Two hearts. Super fun. fun. Yes. <laughs> and there we have it. Oh, it's kind of cool looking. And I can't really hold it up. I just sort of put them. Oh, no. It's, it doesn't work when I hold it up. It was kind of cool. And I was, I was laying it flat on the table and it was almost like two stacked hearts on top of each other yeah it's not it's not showing that's okay it looks cool flat on my table you can just believe me and i bet you <laughs> I, I bet you could make um more so if you uh if you did a clockwise mobius strip and then a counterclockwise and a clockwise and a counterclockwise I, i'm sure you could like stack them and, and get multiple Big chains of hearts chain. <laughs> yeah. yeah if you really if you really felt like it. So I'm sure that there are lots of fun ways to extend this beyond what we've done today. Yay, well, that is it for me and our shape magic. We have our hexaflexagons and we have our Mobius strips and we actually got to talk about the Taurus a little bit as well, which is super fun. And yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that I had this opportunity to, to do some mathematics with you and then share my love of topology. Um, yeah, do you have any questions for me or any way we want to wrap this this up? Uh, just to say thank you so much for coming. I had a lot of fun. I hope <laughs> everyone else had a lot of fun. Um, and thank you, uh, all of you who, who are watching this right now. Um, learn a little bit more about mathematics. Hopefully you found something new. I will be messing with this all night. Um, <laughs> so, And hopefully bring a friend again. You can do it again. You can do these as many times as you want. Um, all it takes is paper, scissors, and some tape or glue. Yeah. So special okay. thanks again to Branwyn um, and best of luck on your, you. your new position. Yes. Thank you so much, Emily. Nice to all see right. you. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>